welcome to New Zealand World News once again for positive messages, positive feedbacks that we always do and we are now here to have a positive conversations with none other than Steve Farrell who is a very known figure, personality, but he amazing is what the work that he does is we are here to have a discussion and conversation with him. I'm going to ask and I'm going to give you some good insights of what Steve Farrell is all about. Over to Steve. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Steve. Welcome to our show. Yes, thank you. And it's really a pleasure to yeah. have this meeting with you and having a good conversation with you because I know you do some amazing work. But most importantly, I wanted to highlight to all our viewers, during this COVID-19, we need people like you and we are missing people like you. But we are, I am more uh, happy to see that you are here with the same energy and the same uh, vision that you started about 10 years ago. Yes. Tell me something about your organizations of the Breakfast Club, which is for kids that you yes. started, which is amazing. Yeah, our vision is to help the schools, the low decile schools, um, so when there's an obstacle that stops the children partaking in the school curriculum, we will help that school overtake and get rid of that obstacle. Right. So if it's food, they need food so they, they can learn. And then once they're learning, then they need other things to help them, whether it's uniform, mm. um, swimming togs, you know, running gear. So all that sort of stuff, we will go and source it and we work with the social workers in the schools. So if they go and visit a family and they haven't got beds or a lounge suite or a dining suite or a fridge, we'll go and get those things for them. Right. So in our last, we've been going 10 years, we've raised about $5 million worth of donated goods in that wow. time. Wow. So, so if the kids are happy at home and they come to school and we can feed them, or find out why they're hungry and then take the food to their families. So, so that's it's all about the children, 100%. So I want to go back and see what really triggered you or made you feel that we wanted to start this breakfast club, because I know it's a basic human rights and needed for the kids particularly in the school. Yeah, we wanted to help with breakfast as the first meal of the day, but we also wanted to find out why they were hungry and then a, a kind of attack right. that reason why they're hungry. Um, if mum and dad weren't working, can we get them work? Can we find out the reason why there's no food at home? Yeah. So if we got food at home, then the kids wouldn't want breakfast at school. So what's happening here, like the school we're at today, Glen Innes, we started here seven years ago. We had 30 kids for breakfast, now none. Right. So we found out why they were hungry, look after the families, mm. and now the families can empower themselves yes. and feed the children. Right. So, so that's what we're about. And then we say, right, what next? Mm. And then when they said, oh, the kids um, aren't very healthy, aren't fit. Mm. So we started fun runs mm. along the waterfront. Mm. Um, things like that. The girls won't partake in athletics because they haven't got bras on. So we're going buy them bras, mm. you know, uh, running shoes, we'll go and source running shoes. Right, right. So things like that, we just say, what next? And keep saying that question, what next, what next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where yeah. we're at. But do you also think that since you started 10 years ago, and now particularly in this year, when because mm. of the COVID-19, have you seen more, more kids into that situation? Has increased or is it? Yeah, COVID hasn't helped. We were only doing five hampers a week. With COVID, we we're doing up to 100. Right. So it didn't help when we were trying to reduce the dependency the families had mm. on food. Yeah. And then when COVID hit, it just exploded. Sure. And because we didn't ha we got s some supermarkets giving us food, mm. but nowhere near enough to handle 100 a week. Right. And so, but it just happened that the right companies rang us and offered us their food, which meant that we're able to feed 100 a week. In fact, we had enough food to feed 200 a week in the end. So I have a question. Um, 
I know I have seen recently with this COVID-19 and after COVID-19 and during this time, lots of charitable organizations, lots of organizations mm. who were in their shoes of helping people and helping this sort of nature of mm. uh, work that you do. You being started as an individual first, mm. and then I heard stories that you started with six kids. Yes. And then now you are handling a lot of things, but it has an, and you are also trying to improve things, not just like hand out, right? Yes. Which is amazing, which is what we wanted more people yes. like you to educate and to inform and not just help out, but just come out of that situation faster so that you don't need to do this. Mm -hmm. So in that context, all these other organizations have not been that kind of visionary where right. they would like to stick and help. Yes. But you are here, sticking here and trying to help. Yeah, so the difference that we have with other, compared with other charitable yeah. organisations that perhaps give food, yeah. we work with the social worker in the school. Right. So we have no contact with the families. We right. do not know who the families are that we are helping. Okay. Um, the social worker deals with that and the principal. Mm. So that's the difference. So with COVID, with families wanting to go to charities to get food, the charities closed their doors at level four mm. because they were scared right. of either catching COVID or whatever. Mm. But with us, we, we were getting all these requests for food through the social workers. Mm. So we prepared the food and left it at the end of the driveway of the right. families, tooted the horn and drove off. So we had no contact with the families whatsoever. We didn't even see the families. Well, not that we personally, like we weren't delivering the social workers who were delivering the food, but they just put it down at the letterbox or at the end of the driveway and drove off. Yeah. So, you know, I'm surprised that other charities that closed didn't think, right. well, how can we get around the problem? The problem yeah. You know, but I think in a lot of areas, their helpers are elderly, retired sure. people who are most vulnerable for COVID where our helpers are young social workers. So, so that's a good positive difference, yes, you think? And yes. also it educates the younger generation and this generations mm -hmm. to help out each other. Definitely and does. support each other, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that's the point of difference. That's a positive impact that you have made. Yeah. Um, and even now we're, we're on school holidays. Yeah. Um, but the headmasters of our schools rang through and said, gave us a list how many hampers they wanted. Yeah. We have no idea where they're going, but we know they wanted 10 or 20 hampers per school, and their social worker turns up, loads them in the back of their vehicle and drive off. And then I go home you know, when we're finished. And that's my day, I've done my bit, I've got the food in. So we just want to resource, but not be the people that go and make contact. Because yeah. it does, you get no, we get no pressure mm. from the families because they don't know who we are. It's yeah. all about one social worker dealing with everything. Exactly, one per school. Mm, one per school. And these schools we are talking about from the primary? Yes. Okay. They go up to year eight at yeah, all our schools. Yeah. Okay. And how do you see the impact in the schools with the school principals positive mm. uh, through this, what you have done, like Breakfast Club when you started? Um, and after that, the school kids started learning better, yes, reading yes. better. I heard that uh, good stories about schools as well, that it yeah. does make a huge impact. One of these things we, we wanted to do was to provide uniforms for the senior children in the schools, mm -hmm. the year seven and the year eight, mm -hmm. because parents weren't going to go and buy uniforms when the children in year nine go to high school. And that's a big expense buying high school uniforms. So they weren't going to buy uniforms in year seven and year eight. They'll just make the kids do. So the kids growing taller and wider didn't fit their uniforms. So he said, why don't we provide new uniform ourselves and see what happens? And as, as a result of us supplying uniforms for the senior children, boys and girls, their attendance went from around 66% to 98%. So they were coming to school almost 100%. And not only that, their English went up through the roof, their maths went up through the roof, to the point where the education board thought, 
there's something fishy going on here and they come and did an audit mm. of two of our schools right. and found out the only thing different was the uniforms. Really? And, and their behaviour changed mm. because the senior children have a different uniform than the rest of the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're known now as the senior kids, so they have to behave differently. Mm. Um, but what we didn't realise is that the year six kids who are about to get new uniforms the following year, they're excited. They're looking forward to coming to school. So we've now got this environment where the kids want to learn. They're fed, they're sleeping well at home, and now they've got this uniform that's making them want to come to, want to, come to school. They like school all of a sudden. And it is so important to have this when you are young. 100%. To get all these things, which is basic things. Yeah. To get a good sleep, come yes. to school regularly. Yeah feel good about going to school, uniforms with good clothing and all. Yes. So definitely you have made that good positive impact mm. there. But in terms of food, uh, breakfast, I remember that kids going hungry or kids not coming to school because of food. Yes. Now that's a big part. How have you handled and how, what have you seen since you started and now when you are doing with the same? Yeah. With this, when a child doesn't come to school, they get a visit. Normally, the first visit's from the social worker, yeah. and then later on from the truancy right. person. But if the social worker can go around, and we encourage the social worker no. to take some food when they go around, just as, g'day, hello, here's some food. You know, whether it be right. breakfast, milk, yeah. or even cake, to have morning tea with the family. Mm -hmm. But have a look around when they're there. If they can, find out what's in their pantry. You know, and if, if the reason that the children are being kept home it's because they're hungry. Well, let's fill their pantry. Let's fill their freezer with food yeah. or their fridge. You know, let's help them and then work out why they were hungry. Mm. And if we can solve that problem, rather than other charities that just keep giving food every week, yeah. we don't want to do that. We want to say, why is that family hungry? Right. Has dad got a job? Or if he's got, you know, mm. what's the problem? What's, what's, why isn't mum working? Mm. You know, and... Yeah, eventually, once you have targeted the reason they're hungry, then you got the next step. Oh, let's get them to school. You know, let's get them a uniform. Let's get them a little computer. What can we do to make that child come to school and enjoy school? You know, and one of the problems that we have too in our low decile schools in this area, there's nine of them, is that children that start school at five have a learning age of between two and three. So that is a major problem. So they're coming to school, they can't read and write because yeah. their parents may not be able to read and write. Mm. So now we're looking at what can we do in that area right. so when the kids start school at five, their learning age is as close as possible to five. Where a neighbouring school here that's decile 10, when their children turn up at five at school, their learning age is seven. You know, so we have to try and do something so we've got the food under control, we've got the clothes under control. Now the kids are wanting to come to school, how can we get them better educated before they come here? Yeah. So that's what we're now. So all the time we keep saying, what next? Mm. What next mm. can we do? You know, and that's the interesting path to go that is, on. That is the interesting path to go on and that keeps you going. Yes, and I was, yeah, and even mm. even when um, one of the when we you and I last spoke, we talked about a, a maths program in the schools, oh, yes. and we've got that program in this school here, and they're loving it. Mm. And I'm just saying, why didn't we do that before? So so we don't want to be just one dimensional. We do breakfast, mm. and that's all we do. And there's a lot of breakfast clubs in New Zealand that provide breakfast, then leave. Yeah. And I went, no, the school have welcomed you in. Mm. Stay. Find out what more you can do to help that school. Yeah. And if, if we can find a, like a maths program that helps them learn maths much better, let's get behind it. Yeah. You know, yeah. why, should, so why should our children mm. leave here in year eight mm. and not be as clever as the kids over at the other school? Yes. Yes. There's no reason. Mm. And that's why we say, what can we do to improve the kids? And it's, yeah, it's, it's exciting. Yes. You know. Yes, no, I appreciate that. That's really great. So with the new um, policies that's coming around is the free lunches for the yes. school. What do you think about that with your uh, support and with your expertise yeah. and experience that you have been in this? My only worry there yeah. is that the schools that we look after, we provide lunches, but we only get about 10 requests a day. Now all the children have lunch in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So the teachers are able to look around and see who hasn't got lunch. 
So we get 10 out of a school of 200. Mm -hmm. There's only about 10 each day that want lunch. Right. Now the government's coming along and say, we are going to get a caterer to make Very sandwiches good. for everybody. So do you want 200 lunches? Well, of course they're going to say yes. Of course, yeah. But it takes away from mum and dad mm. making the lunches for the family. Mm. So I don't know. I, I, that's above our, my pay grade. That's up for the principals. They're all saying yes. They see, you know, let's get the kids eating the same. That that could be a good thing. Mm. Who knows? You know, I, 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 being apolitical, I just believe that we should give everything a go. Yeah. You know, and this particular, our government at the moment yeah. wants to do this. And I went, let's have a go. Rather than be negative, yeah, ah, it's not going to work. Mm. You know, give it a go because mm. it may work. Yeah. And then if it does work, what next? Mm. You know, so that's what, that's how we are um, in relation to everything. We just keep, take it on rather than say it won't work, yes. give it a go, yes. and then say, it, well, it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so who knows? Yeah, no, that's a good point you raised because until you try, you don't know. And 100%. until you make it for everyone, you won't know how many kids are really yes. into that space. But coming back to that social worker, so... He, is there a mechanism or a, like for you, you, whatever you have been asked by the social worker or you think they told, tell you these families, how many families, is there something that you think should have a mechanism now in place if there are free lunches mm -hmm. going on for everyone? So this social worker who has identifying before families now Will that make any effect or change for you in terms of support that you are giving already? No, yeah, we kind of know the families in our school. Mm. The headmaster does, the social workers do. Right. So they will know, even though we're providing lunch, mm. who struggles. Yeah. You know, they'll yeah, know that. So we, we will be able to find out mm. and therefore what can we do mm. to help that family who are struggling. Mm. Um, we're doing seminars now from Parenting Place. So we've got lecturers coming in at night and talking to the families about parenting. And yeah. so, you know, we, we kind of know, even with like we're doing hampers now, when a family may well ask, we will know that they don't need that hamper. Why are they asking? Mm. You know, so then the social worker will go and visit them and say, you've asked for a hamper, why? You know, and then find out why and then um, and we just had a family turn up from, I think it was a Waikato, yeah. and they had no beds. Mm. And in one week, we've been able to supply all their beds. You know, so it's just, uh, and, and we've got a, a lounge suite for them and a dining room suite's coming. So we can now, that family's right, we can tick that box yeah. and, and move on to another family. You know, and it's, so it's the same with washing machines and, Microwaves, you know, we, we're constantly getting people ringing us and offering us these items, you know. And I appreciate, like, what do you see has changed during the COVID-19? Like, we Kiwis are quite generous in you guys, yes. and that's a good part of our, of our country, uh, that we try to help and help out. In terms of what COVID-19 has brought and your situation, mm. your sources that you have got, to get all this make happen. Mm -hmm. Has that changed or has that been reluctant or you find more generous? Yeah, during, when we were on level four, we were, as I said, we were operating and handing out food parcels. Mm -hmm. That period of level four, we had six and a half thousand dollars donated to us mm -hmm. to help wow. with food purchasing. Right. We had a major fish company ring us up and offer us 300 kilo of fish every week. You know, so we had more food than we knew what to do with coming in. Mm. And corporates were being more generous, families were being more... We were worried, mm. because we survive on monthly donations, that if any of our donors got made redundant, yeah. they would stop paying to us. Mm. So we started thinking, oh, we better try and restrict our petrol usage to, say, three days a week. But when we did that, we got so many phone calls on other days offering us food, so we ended up driving more. Um, but we, we took the, the, the attitude from the outset that it wasn't the government's role to feed our families. 
I was coming to that only. That's why I asked you the sources that you have got and the people that we have got so much generosity in our country itself. And it's not just the government's job mm. to fail. It's the whole community. Mm. At the end of the day, the government takes from us and mm. gives this and distributes. Yes. So more partnering. So what do you like to see happening with this free lunches program? The government should be more working because people like you who have not just survived, who have not just started on your own, but you have been doing this for more than 10 years mm -hmm. now, a decade. And uh, it's really amazing to see that um, not many companies survive on that mm -hmm. time. But your sources, your people that you are relying on, depending on, they have been always giving that generosity showing. But in terms of government's help and support, mm. because as I said, like we have to work with the government, mm -hmm. every single person, rather than leaving for the government to take decisions to fill it. What one positive support that you would like to see happening for people like you? Yeah, we, we have, from day one of our 10 year cycle, mm. have never relied on the government for no, help. No, no, yeah. Because we, wanted to do things differently mm. and as soon as you get government or even a, a major corporate yeah. come on board yeah. they will kind of control what mm. you do mm. and uh, that may not work mm. so we sit down with the principals mm. and say what do you think we should do next yeah. and how we should do it and I, I've come back with ideas and they just laugh at me go away mm. that's not going to work right. but we work with the schools yeah. You know, but when it comes to government, doesn't matter what government it is, they will control. You have to report back to them and how you spent the money and all these sort of things. Well, well we don't have to. It's just my wife and I is in relation to our charity, but we're answerable to the headmasters and we have an advisory board that we answer to as well. But we don't have a trustees that control what we do. We just listen to some clever people that we got around us. Yeah and work like that and not rely mm -hmm. on you know the government's mm -hmm. help now if the government said we want to give you some funding yes but we've gone to councils yeah. um and they've offered us a very minor amount of money mm -hmm. for a project mm -hmm. um it could be like a tenth of what we need for a project but they want so much reporting on their tenth mm -hmm. we're going look no keep your money mm -hmm. we don't want your money mm -hmm. You know, we'll go and do it, but you know, we've got some ideas that we want to do mm. um, that would reduce expenditure in the schools, Correct. but it's very hard to get funding mm. to do that. Um, we don't spend one cent on wages. We don't, I'm not paid, my wife's not paid, mm. so 100% what we get mm. goes right. to the coalface. Mm. You know, and we're lucky we have Rotary that who get behind us and have yeah. and don't don't put any control over us what we do with the monies More yes and we have friends of ours that give us monthly donations so that's how we survive um, yeah. so you don't see much uh, point in even after this COVID-19 the child poverty rate people are talking about and it's the statistics reports have come in that it's quite getting um, bigger or slightly bigger whatever but the controlling and everything is still going on in that regard but in your sense what do you see if you don't need help of the government or need the help in what areas that you think at least the government should be like rather than doing this reporting or the monitoring the reports which is great for them to understand mm -hmm. but for the person who is on the ground and doing this work amazing to reach maximum people this should be minimize the reporting and all that yeah i i think too yeah i think that like the msd and and government departments like that mm. they could gift monies to organizations that they see are working yeah. like in the area we are now the glen and this area yeah. it is well known what we do in this area and how it's working mm. Mm. um so it wouldn't be hard for one of those area people organization to say we want to get behind what you're doing here's a here's a grant of yeah. whatever the money is they want to give us um, and it would go towards a project you know one of the things like we looked at it costs the school six thousand dollars a year to mow their lawns mm. 
and went, oh, why don't we get a tractor that can mow lawns and it could be used for all the schools. <laughs> sure. And that would be a fraction mm. if all the schools had our ownership of this one. We could say one tractor for three or four schools yeah. and we could find someone to mow the lawns, mm. you know, and that would save a lot of money. So there's ways, Where you know, but we tried that avenue of get raising funds mm. for a good lawn, you know, like a ride on tractor or something. And we come across obstacle and obstacle, you know, and all our schools were happy for even for us to own the tractor mm. and the person would mow the lawn. And we've got Rotary coming to us and say, we've got people yeah. that are retired that would love to mow the lawns. Mm. So we could mow all these lawns for the cost of petrol and the maintenance of the tractor. You know, so there's way, but no, every school, $6,000 a school, they pay out to someone to come in and mow their lawns. Mm. Well, there's nine schools in this area. Right. There's a lot of money being yeah. spent on mowing lawns. Lawn. Well, if we could save that, then they could use that money mm. for the children. Mm. And that's I agree with you 100% because there are lots of things and lots of ways of doing mm. things, but uh, we probably had to come out of that complacency yes. and find new in mm. initiatives and new innovative ways to minimize yes. and maximum reach out to the kids and to the people. So I really appreciate that. Um, but uh, tell me, going back to that, um, when you started the Breakfast Club as a hungry kids, seeing hungry kids with six kids, and now you have got uh, how many schools you got? Yeah, you got seven got schools. Seven schools that you are operating. So you've got a pretty good idea mm. in Auckland, particularly, where we think everything is okay, mm. but it's not. So one thing that stops us providing uniforms for our schools mm. where we know the result. Mm. So of the schools that we look after, there's three that get uniforms provided. Mm. But the other schools all want the uniforms. Education Board wants them to have new uniforms for the senior children. Mm. But the Education Board's not going to give us one dollar mm. towards it. And it, it costs us, like once you've... Uh, from year two onwards, it costs about um, $2,000 per school. That's the school that only got 200 kids in. Because you're looking at about 50 children. So it's about $2,000 a year to get a really good quality drip dry shirt that's got their logo on. Yeah. For each, and if we did that at all our schools, yeah. we would have, like at the moment, because um, of COVID, of course, the children are only just getting out of 60% attendance. Right. They're staying at home. Yeah. You know, but the senior kids, mm. they're coming. Mm. Mm. So you know, if we could provide that out of all our schools and we got attendance close in the 90%, mm. that would solve, the police will tell you it solves a lot of crimes that are being committed during the day. Mm. You know, if all the kids are at school, yeah. it's a far better for the children you know, but that's just one thing that we've come up with and it would just be like an organisation to say, we're happy to give you $2,000 per school for uniforms. Brilliant, because we know the result of that small contribution can do. You do know. you think the government should take notice of the uniforms? Yeah, and, well, that's, yeah, and they know the results because they did that audit mm. and they were shocked to see the audit produced what they never thought was happening. Yeah. And the school said, it's Breakfast Club, it's their polo shirts. Mm. One little yeah. thing like that can produce such a... And it's like where we provided bras for the senior girls. Mm. We did 100 bras in two schools mm. and we went to Bendon and they supplied them. 100% mm. of those girls ran in the school athletics. Mm. That's huge. That's huge impact. You know, That's so yeah. so if we can do little things, swimming togs, mm. we, we, we put it on Facebook and said we want swimming togs. 88,000 hits on Facebook. We've got togs from all around the world were coming in the mail to the school for the kids so they could learn to swim. So I want to understand from you what you have seen that you have provided mm. lunches, you have provided uniform, you have provided some accessories, tools, everything to the school. What is the outcome positive that I can see and what the government or the should see is are these areas considered for funding as the basic entitlement or basic things or is it considered as more not to do as a basic but maybe if it happens happens if it doesn't it doesn't how do you see this as 
yeah, should well, be considered as basic. Yeah, because see, what choice have you got? You know that the children at school, yeah. towards the end of their primary schooling, yeah. they're going to outgrow their uniform. Correct. So most of the schools are just wear whatever you want to wear. We would never have known the, what the result was of giving them polo shirts yeah. until we did it. Mm. Mm. You know, we did. Um, we decided, like, with how the, the school were worried about, they're going to sports camp. Yeah. And it, when they went there, the kids struggled on the last day or the last two days because they weren't fit. Mm. So we said, why don't we do fun runs? So we did three fun runs a year. Yeah. Gave the kids running brand new running shoes. Yeah. Gave them rewards for winning and having the most improved time. The police ran with the kids because it was the police qualifying distance that they were running. They went to sports camp. They had a 500% increase in trophies the next year. Really? So what did that, all of a sudden, mm. the schools that were sending to camp, the kids felt empowered. They felt that there is, and these other schools that are at sports camp are all wealthy schools, mm. and they were beating them all. Mm. Because one thing about low decile children, their hand-eye coordination is usually very good mm. compared with the decile 10 schools who are more studious type children. Mm. Our kids are very good at sport and if they can go away and get trophies, that makes them feel we're as good as them. Mm. We can leave when we leave school, we're as good as those guys down the road. But up until now, they never got that, you know. So, but the high schools are contacting he, our primary schools, yeah. and so whatever you're doing, keep doing it because the kids that you're sending to us for high school are a far better quality child mm. than they used to be. So we know there's something that we're doing up until year eight that's working. Uh -huh. Yes, no, I agree. Thanks, Steve. But now coming back to this is all what you have done some amazing great work and you're still doing and we really really have wish more people like you exist and keep doing after hearing this also but with your personal journey you were an ex-cop yes and you have seen the first hand situation of people whether in crimes or mm. whether in small crimes or whatever but and then now journey to school Tell me something about your personal positive journey that you have been through as a cop and then afterwards as a charity that you have been doing. Coming, coming from being in the police mm. to what we're doing now, you really have to have a brain transplant because mm. <laughs> you, you can't come into this environment mm. where the people, you'll see them stealing food, yes. Yes. where in the police you would go, oh, theft, arrest. But when you're with them and you think, what would I do if I was hungry? Mm. How would I provide food for my family? Yeah. You know, and I would probably steal because mm. you have to feed your family, you know, especially the man of the house, the hunter and the gatherer. Mm. Um, so I, I had a different outlook when I was at, down at their level mm. um, as to how they think. And I straight away went to those families that I saw taking stuff and they said, hey, ask me. And the answer is yes. Mm. And it stopped stealing overnight. Mm. You know, I just get, I said, come to me. I'm never going to say no. I just yeah. need to know what you're after and I'll give it to you. Um, so, yeah, we, we, but it gives us also when they find out that you're an ex-policeman mm. and that they see that you're a, a kind person that understands his empathy towards them, they change. They, they trust you. Mm very quickly to say, well, you, you know, and I was in the police in Glen Innes here, it was my first posting. Oh, right. So back in 1972. Yeah. So I was, I knew what Glen Innes was like then mm. and what it's like now. And it's changed hugely in that time. Mm. So, you know, so I've, and though when I was a young kid growing up in this area, mm. I, I loved everybody. I was a real happy, loving type of person. Mm. And that's come back to me now. And on that same old Steve that was a little Stephen yeah. back in those early days, mm. um, knowing what these people are like. And where others who are outside the area will go, oh, who are those, and label people in this area, I go, no, mm. they're lovely people. Yes. They're awesome. Why aren't we helping them? Why don't you help them? Mm. And we're lucky. I think we're going to talk about the Christmas thing. Mm. We're lucky we've got a group of friends that see what we're doing and help fund us in projects that we do, especially our Christmas project. Yes. And the reason they help us, mm. 
because they see what we're doing and have a heart, a heartfelt reaction. So I think if I go to someone else down the road and say, oh, well, this is what we do, you're a real estate agent, can you give me some money? They go, oh, I don't know what you do, I don't see what you do. But people that are actually part of it, and you're seeing that now that you're, you're coming into these schools as well, yes. You want to help them because these children are beautiful, Absolutely. and you want yes. to get behind them. And 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 you know, and we've been lucky. We've got we've got a good relationship with a, a St. Kennigan's College, and we we're able to get. We've had some scholarship children put in there, yeah. um, so we've been lucky there. Mm. Now St. Kennigan's, I've seen what we're doing, and have built us a food bank. Mm. So we've now got a, a good source of food. Right. So yeah, you because know, they had a heartfelt reaction to what we're doing, and I think. Yeah, coming from a, the police background, but before you're policeman, mm. you know, if you're a caring person and then you're a policeman, now you're back to being a caring. Not saying that policemen aren't caring. I think more caring, they, I would put the word as you are looking, want to have a positive change in the yes. society, positive yes. change in the community with whatever. Humans yeah. come with their own weaknesses yeah. and strengths, but yeah. how you improve them and how you make them positive is more important. Yeah, I think that in the police you're constantly battling against people that are bad. Yes. Where now we see people that are lovely. Mm. And they're probably the same people, but we see them in a different light. Yes. You know, so. It's great. Um, so tell me something about the Christmas coming on now with this yeah. whole year, 2020. Yeah. It's been absolutely... Yeah, well... This kind of thing, situation for many people. Yeah, we, we, we decided when we first came to Glen in this area, um, that the, a lot of the families didn't celebrate Christmas and it's a New Zealand tradition. Yes. Um, even whatever religion you are, yes. we do celebrate Christmas. Yes. Um, was it the turkey or the ham? And so we thought, what can we do to make them celebrate it? So we initially put on banquet for them, but we got to 600 people and that's all we could fit. <laughs> so then we said, why don't we create a shopping, like a new world shop in the, in the hall? And I said, yeah, so we have a mini supermarket mini and we have supermarket, yeah. all the things in there that the families like, like can, t cans of corned beef and all those horrible things mm -hmm. that they love. Yeah, and, but then outside, why don't we create like an Easter show like we had as kiddies? So we, we create where you get a little bag and you fill up your lollies in the bag. And, you can, and we have Mr. Whippy giving, everything's free. So Mr. Whippy's doing a thousand ice creams. We got lollies, we got popcorn, candy floss, hot dogs. We got a coffee lady there doing coffee, cafe to you, doing coffees and smoothies. Yeah. We got letters to Santa happening outside. You know, we got bouncy castles. The whole day is the free. Whole day, like a normal. It's just like we had as children, yeah. and we never paid because our parents did. <laughs> yes. But but it's the same environment we wanted to create. But these mums are coming out with a shopping trolley because we borrow shopping trolleys. And they're full, they're overladen with about $800 worth of stuff, all free. And they get a leg of lamb, they get all the food they need to create lunch on Christmas Day. But there's other stuff, they want nappies, rash cream for their babies, bras for the older girls. We kind of cater for the, everybody on that day in that hall, and it's a well. And usually the mums are leaving crying because nobody in their whole life has ever done that for free. You know, and this is our seventh year of doing that, and we love it. So you uh -huh. are like more like a real Santa Claus. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I try and be is the Santa on the day. Um, Absolutely amazing. But mm. yeah, they talk about it's better to give than receive. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because that night, my wife and I go home that night, and we're just crying. Mm. You know, and yes, you know, and we're yes. tired. You know, but yeah. we're so over the moon, and because. Yeah, we, we end up being the same as all the recipients and they're crying and we're crying yeah, and they all want to cuddle. So we're up there cuddling and we're crying and they're crying. It's just, it's a great day. And last year TV1 came yes. and filmed it and put it on the six o'clock news. Mm. So that was great, you know. So it's, it's an enjoyable day. Mm. We, we raise a, we have to raise 27,000 to make it happen. Mm. But I put out an email every year to say, hey guys, it's on again. <laughs> Don't forget to give me some money. And within 24 hours of sending out that email, $18,000 was pledged from my friends. Right. And, and then now we're almost October. Yes. 
and we've got $23,000 of our 27 raised. So we've got two months left to raise another, you know, three and four thousand dollars. So it's a great feeling to have, yet all of the donors are almost all personal friends. You know, I've got a couple of corporates I'm seeing, um, but some of the corporates that have come on board are now personal friends. So we've been quite blessed and they've rung up and said, we want to put money in your account. It's good to see the corporates yeah. coming in actually. Yes, the but, the, but they come on the day, mm. they have a stand and they're behind the stand working. Mm. So it's one of the things we encourage our donors to say, thank you for your money, but come on the day. And then their heart, mm. they, you know, they're behind the stand, they see the look on the people's faces yeah. and they, yes, I want to be part of that. And it's probably why we've got the same donors for seven years, the same volunteers for seven oh, years. Yes. You know, it's like, wow. Mm. So, yeah, it's a great event. And it's on the 19th of December. I'd love to see you on the day. Yeah. You know, come yeah, along. I can't miss it. Yeah, have a coffee. Yeah, <laughs> no, definitely. I've seen a great uh, transformation, Steve, about you, not just hearing, but also first-hand experience with you as well. You are really, really uh, inspiration and motivation for people like me and many of people like who are mm. trying to do or trying to do their bit. The transformation I see that being an ex-cop, looking at first hand of the people trying to solve the community issues, but also make the community safer. And then coming back to school, kids with breakfast and mm. then looking after their accessories and things that they need. But most amazingly after that as well, like educating is your goal mm. next what's next and educating the kids with different tools like vedic match we introduced in the school mm. was amazing to see the results as well but how uh, important it is like your brain as you said you need a shift of brain mm. to do this from coming from cop background to then this breakfast lunch accessories mm. and then education and now what next basically but so amazing. So what final few words you want to say, Steve, in terms of your positivity outcome that you would like to spread in the whole nation, not just? Yeah, well, what we're trying to do, you know, we would love a corporate to come on, on board, but mm. like some of the corporates, you can look on the floor here today and see the carpet. Yeah. That was from a tiling company that rang us up and said, we've got all these tiles, all different colours. Mm. Do you want them? And we go, oh, what? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. And they said, we will come to your school. Mm -hmm. We will lay the tiles for you. Mm -hmm. And the rest of our staff will go and work with the kids. And that's what we want. You know, don't just throw, here's a dollar. Yes, yes. You know, come along yeah. and be part. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a teddy bears picnic last week for the new entrance kids. But Mr. Whippy came mm -hmm. and gave all the kids free ice creams. Well, he's, he comes to our Christmas event. He loves so much what we're doing. He wants to come to every event. And that's what we want. We just don't want Mr. Whippy coming along and giving out ice creams. We want them part of the vision. Mm. You know, so if a corporate said, hey, we love what you're doing. We want to get behind those polo shirts. Yeah, but come down and see the kids. Hand out the shirts to the kids. Be, be look at them, you know, have lunch with the kids and things like that and play touch football or volleyball with the kids you know so it's it's not i don't want a corporate just to, to say here's some money see you later mm. you know we want involvement from that corporate to be part mm. engagement's the word you know 100 percent. 100 percent. i agree with that concept with that note i thanks very much once again thank you steve and to all the viewers i think if you need to help or if you need support to support this Steve Farrell's uh, charitable organization and the Breakfast Club, it's all making a difference. He has made a difference. He has shown how to make a difference. And I think everybody should get behind and make a difference. So that with that note, I say it's a very positive impact that Steve Farrell has made, not just as an ex-cop, but as a service to the community, service to the schools. and. Kids is where it starts. So I really, really, once again, Thank you. appreciate Steve for your excellent work and excellent keep doing this, mm -hmm. as we say. So we will just keep doing. Thank you, New Zealand World News. Um, great for inviting me along today and sharing 
about our experiences with these children in our low decile school areas. You know, these children, given the equal opportunities, can be equal to any, any other child. You know, and all they need is the love, the love that's out there that we all can give and share. So thank you for this time. Thank you for inviting me along to be part of New Zealand World News. Thank you. All the best. Thank you.